traders who follow the trend, uh, you may want to start looking at the vortex indicator. Uh, we can use that to not only determine our trend direction, but it can also point to reversals and buy sell signals. And the vortex was actually invented by a pair of Swiss market traders. It's pretty simple to understand, but I think it can be pretty powerful in how simple it actually is. So I want to talk about what it is, how to read it, how we calculate it, and how we can use it in a trading strategy. So let's first talk about what it is. And it sits in a separate indicator window from price, so it's not on price itself. And you're going to see two lines that are going to oscillate around each other. One line is going to represent positive trend move. One line represents negative trend movement, price going down. It does not show really a consolidated trading environment, okay? It only shows bulls and bears. Now the lines, they not only represent the trend, but the crosses of the lines can be used as signals to enter a position or exit your trade. And it actually looks a little bit like the ADI, but it's calculated differently. So the green line above the red line, that's an uptrend. And lines that are far apart actually shows a strong trending market. And the tight lines will show a weaker one. So compare the lines in this chart here with the price bars. And I want you to see what relationships you can find between the indicator and price. So how does the indicator measure trend strength? Well, it does so using the average true range, the ATR. And the calculation, even though it's calculated for you, you should know it calculates the difference between the previous high and the previous low, positive trend. Calculate the difference between current low and previous high, that's the negative trend movement. And the indicator will use the previous X number of periods, so you set it, but the default is 14. And then it's gonna sum them up. Now the ATR is then used over X number of periods again. And the indicator is going to adjust the trend movement with a volatility reading. So keep in mind though, when you're adjusting periods at a larger settings, is gonna look smoother. The shorter settings will have a choppy reading sometimes and whipsaws of the plus and the minus lines. That's gonna to lead to false signals, just like you'd see with any other technical indicator, including a moving average. So the settings that you're going to use depend on the trading style that you have. So here's a simple strategy. And knowing what you now know about the indicator, it's pretty simple to define a strategy. So we know the vortex indicator can give us trend direction, trend strength, and buy and sell signals. So I want to utilize a basic strategy using price action and simple trend lines. And yeah, you can add any number of indicators like the MACD, but simplicity should not be overrated in trading. We're also going to use multiple time frame trading. So we're going to look at the higher time frame for our trend direction. So if the higher time frame is up, we're going to only take buy signals on the lower time frame. Sell signals on the lower time frame will only be taken when the overall trend on the higher time frame is down. So the lower time frame, this is going to be the frame that we find our setups and the lines will trigger our entries. So since the indicator is going to use closing prices, the current high or the current low can be will replace a stop order to enter a trade. Now this is not a crossover strategy where we just take trades when the indicator crosses. The indicator is a tool and we're going to use other techniques. So here, this instrument is in an existing trend and it's up on the weekly chart. Now, since the weekly chart's in an uptrend, on the daily chart, we're only gonna look for buys. Any short signals, we're just going to ignore them. So after the weekly chart plots the uptrend, we can see that price on the daily chart starts making lower highs into support. Now, generally that's bearish, but remember, we're not considering any short moves. Now we do see a vortex buy signal, and it is in the context of a break of that down sloping trend line. So using price action analysis, we can see that the lower shadows on the candlesticks that make up the support level, that shows more bullish action. So we just place a buy stop order over the high of the candle that caused a crossing of the lines for our entry price. But the breakout of the trend line, it falls into a trading range and we don't get triggered into the trade. So now our trade entry can change. It can be at the break of the high where we had it originally set Price action traders can read the formation of the trading range and even use a smaller trend line break to get into the trade. Or you can just wait for the break of the highs and look to enter at any pause in price. Now stop loss locations, we have to have one. They're vital to have. And there are a few places for it. The obvious spot is always below the larger support areas. But we can also use a smaller range support level at the dotted line on the chart. And some traders will just use a multiple of the ATR to place their stop. 
like two ATR. So we have to use position sizing that takes into account risk management that allows us to take several losses in a row without a big dent to our trading account. What about profits? Again, there's many ways to take profits. We can use the measured move of the height of that bigger consolidation, the downsloping trend line to the support. We can use a trailing stop to ride the trend. We can use a multiple of the ATR trade management, right? So two ATR, three ATR, we take profits. Or you could just wait for a crossing point of the lines to take profits. Now, if you are using a crossing of the lines for an exit, remember that that parameter length will have an effect on your profits. Because if you adjust it too tight, you can easily get whipsawed. If you take too long of a period, it may keep you in trades longer, but it can have you riding too much negative price action for your liking. Now, there's no one size that fits all in trading, no matter what you're trading. So my final thoughts, it does what it's supposed to do. It shows you the directional movement of price via the line. How you interpret the crossing as a signal, that's going to be totally up to you. But I've always personally preferred adding chart patterns and having an understanding of price action. I put that into all of my trading. Just relying on the crossing of an indicator without supporting information can lead to a pretty tough, painful trading career. Thanks for watching.